Hello and welcome to this introduction and favorite features of the Digital Heat Effects Print Optimizer software. We're going to go right into it and show you some really cool features and things that this software will offer for your Digital Heat Effects and White Toner t-shirt printing system. So let's just do it. Uh, what can the Print Optimizer software do? It does a ton of stuff. I'm going to show you a handful. First and foremost, it's pretty easy to use, which is probably one of my most favorite features. If you have an image, you can bring in a vector image like an AI, Adobe Illustrator file, or you can bring in an EPS vector image. You can also bring in a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF. So it's really cool because you can just take an image like this logo here, which is a PNG, and drag it right in. Okay, if you have artwork being done for you, that it's going to go ahead and uh, you'll get emails, say, from an artist or somebody in a different department if you work for a larger company, um, or if it's a, just a husband and wife team and the husband does the art and the wife does the printing or vice versa, you can just hand somebody a USB file, here's the art, open up the USB, drag it right in, it's ready to go into the printer. So that's fantastic that you don't necessarily need to have your graphic artwork software on your computer at all. That's a cool feature just by itself, is you can see a preview of your image right here, and there's all types of adjustments. You can adjust how this looks if you wanted a higher resolution image here, all types of things. But, but to keep it simple, you drag it in here, you see a preview. It does a couple cool things for you. Um, within our system, we talk about the um, safety border. That's one of the, the ways to make the marrying process easier when you adhere um, the, basically the adhesive to your printed image, to the toner. Having this border makes that process a little bit easier. And it automatically does that for you. So it's automatically in there. You don't need it in your artwork at all. Uh, second thing you'll notice is it's already reversed. I think that's just a fantastic thing because you get your artwork done, your artwork, you see how it, you want it to look on the screen on your t-shirt, right? If you can imagine, uh, if you you're, create your artwork or an artist creates it, this is exactly how it's gonna look, and then they send it over and it's ready to print. You don't have to worry about reversing it or if you forgot to reverse it. It's easy to tell with words, but if it's in images, you know, if an image is supposed to face left or right, you don't have to worry about that, it automatically reverses it for you. So I think that's another really cool feature. Another, when we're talking about logos like this, is you see in this logo we've got different shades, different colors. We've got blues and uh, we've got yellows, reds, magentas, etc. So what the software does is it actually has an optimized color matching built into it, which means that all of these colors, it understands the language of the printer, it understands what the graphic software is attempting to tell it to do, and it takes those two processes, marries them together to get the most optimized color match which is something in any printing technology we know is an issue. So whether you're printing on uh, just from Microsoft Paint to a piece of paper, or you've got a digital, digital heat effects printing system, or you've got a $100,000 roll type of commercial printer, getting from the art to the right colors on your substrate is always something that is a little bit of a challenge. This software helps to fix that for you. Now, talking about that, we have graphics and we have photo, okay? What's really cool about this is when you bring things into here, so if, say if I have something with, that's got skin tones, like a photo and an image of a person, I could, take, I could take this and I'll bring one in. So I can take this image like this photo, like this kitten, you drag it right in and it's gonna generate a preview. Now, don't worry about this one here. As you can see, there's a little bit of uh, pixelation in here. That's really on purpose. This, this side over here, it's a setting in the software that it puts it here in a lower resolution, helps the software run better, that it's not constantly trying to generate a high res image. But if we were going to print this image, say for canvas, um, we put it in the photo, it automatically will attempt to optimize it we can uh, go ahead and if we wanted to get it nice and large on this, we can rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, we can hit the fit to sheet and it's going to print this as large as it can within the sheet size. So if you had a nice big canvas you were gonna print this image on, it's gonna go ahead and do that for you. 
Another feature within this, which is really cool, and we'll show you um, some different images of this um, kitten that we actually put on a t-shirt, but if you go into your color adjust, you can actually make some adjustments to say like the saturation of this image. So if I changed it to say from a zero to a 10 and hit OK, it's going to go ahead and update that image for you. So as it prints out, it'll create a more saturated, more rich, more vibrant color. So if you look at some of the samples we'll put up on the screen of this, you can see how moving this around and making some adjustments in the software changed the way that the image printed. So it's a really cool effect, um, especially when you're doing um, skin tones and such. You can go in there and you can move around the chroma and, and um, all of these other things. So if we go in here, you can move around the saturation and the brightness and there's plenty of really cool things we're not going to get into in this video. But it's really great that if you print an image and it's not exactly where you need it to be, you can go in there and you can make some adjustments right from the software. A very cool feature. Um, talking about the difference between the graphics queue and the photo queue, when I talked about the graphics queue, we said how it, um, it, it, I was optimizing for matching colors. What the photo queue does, which is really cool, is it optimizes to maintain photo integrity. So if we look at a photo and there's lots of different things happening in this photo, there's lots of shades. And what it will do is, if you've ever printed a picture before, Right? You take a picture digitally, you print it, and then you look at the printed image, and the eyes maybe have lost their color or a skin tone. There's a hot spot, if you've ever seen that in a picture, like a hot spot of, of a cheek, you know, where all of a sudden it's bright white there. It's because the printer doesn't understand what's happening. Right? So what the software will do is it will compensate for that and make that transition from all of these colors. So it looks really nice, and you maintain photo integrity. So another great feature of the software. Next one we'll go into is the neon metallic. Okay, I love this just for how simple as it is. So if we take a piece of art and we'll, we'll open this up. So I've got this guitar. I've got a vector version and the raster version. They're the same exact file though. The only difference was, was this was saved as a PNG. This was saved as an Adobe Illustrator file. So I take my vector version and I bring it into metallic. And as I bring it in, it's going to go ahead and, uh, and process that image. So here we go. And now this image is processed. This is actually ready to print right now for a metallic. If I knew that the size and, and everything was exactly ready to go, I just go ahead and I hit print and put my metallic paper in there. I don't need to adjust my artwork at all. So we can do the same thing with the neon. We'll do the same thing with the neon here. Bring that art in. And this is going to be ready for our neon. So on the screen here, we're going to show you um, the neon and the metallics. And what it's doing is it's laying down different layers of white or, um, or CMYK blend of toner that's perfect for, for that paper. So it's actually designed for that. You do not need to adjust your art. And let me actually show you what this art looks like exactly. So if we go into just our graphics queue, and I take that same vector, and while we're here I'll bring in the raster just to show you. Oh, there we go. There, they're both coming in. So here's the raster one, and the vector one's generating the preview, and there we go. So this is the same exact art as you can see, just a raster and a, and a vector image. The print optimizer will bring them both in. They will both, at, at this point in time, they'll basically both print the same way. Um, but when I bring it into my neon or metallic queue, it pulls out all the color, flattens it out. If there's a background, there's no, there's no background color in there. It's just going to print just the CMYK or white or whatever it needs to actually print your neon and metallic. So if you look at some of the images here, we've printed all three 
of these together using the same art and only using the print optimizer software to actually create three different types of prints. One on just a regular paper doing a full color, one doing metallic, and one doing neon. If we go into here, we can also see um, under the raster image, we're going to do something else. We're going to do another cool feature that is the knock me out color. So what, what this is, is if you know about raster images, right, they have a background often. Right, this one has a white background. So what it actually says is it automatically detects the background and it says remove the white. So we end up with this right here. And if we zoom in, you'll see. It's removed the white background automatically, ready to print. We can also remove other colors if we wanted and needed to, and, and we'll dive into that in, with another image um, to get a good view of that. But just to give you one other feature here, a cool thing is if you hit this red mask, it's actually going to show you, and if you click it, kind of brings it back and forth. This is where toner will go. So if you happen to see, you know, up in the corner, say of this image, you know, there's, there's some sort of... Uh, uh, you know, bl black or red area up here and there shouldn't be, you know there's something in your artwork. So this is a great tool to save time and money and effort by taking a look and say, is, does this match? Is it red everywhere? Is there extra red? That means that there's some sort of artifact in this graphic we need to take care of. You can also do shirt color. So if I'm going to put this on a black shirt, you'd see it there. If I was going to put it on, say, a maroon shirt or green shirt, this is another cool way. How's your art going to look with the color of garment you're going to put on? We're going to put this on a white shirt, so it's going to look like this. And we hit OK. We go back to transparent, make sure that's good. We hit OK. This is ready to send to the printer. So we took a raster image, just removed the background simply using the knock me out color feature. Now if we also go here and we bring in this other image, so this was another raster image that we have. And if we go to that knock me out color again. So here we go. It, it was on the white, so it tries to pull the white out. But if we don't want to remove the white. So here you can see we remove that, but there's some shading in this image, right? So what you can actually do is you can start to make adjustments in this. So you get just the right zone and you remove everything. So maybe we can grab this color, grab a little darker. There we go. So we, we took a second there, took a few clicks, but you see that's just an image that I just had. I wasn't sure exactly where to go with it and I went from, from, from having this, this full big background that was a fade out to getting right to his own. And, and again, you know, move this thing around so you find exactly where you want to be. Okay. Now we still have a shadow back there. Now maybe we want that, maybe we don't, right? So I can actually choose color two and say color two I want to get rid of this really dark. Enable color two and it pulls out color two. And I also have this, maybe I want to get rid of that third color so I can go to color three and pull that out. And again we can go to color four and pull that out. So we've pulled out four colors from this image and we can also replace them as we wanted to. So if this was going on a blue shirt, I might do this. Then I switch it to my white shirt and it's going to look like that. So here if I go shirt color and I'm doing it on a white shirt. Or actually I wouldn't want to do this on a white shirt, I would do this on a black shirt I should say. So there's it is on the black shirt. Ready to go. Then I'm on my blue shirt. It would look like that. So we maintain the color of, say, the inside of this head on the blue shirt, 
and then when we do the black shirt. And we would print those separately, obviously, right? So here my blue shirt's ready to go. I click OK, send it over to my printer. Then I can come back, I can bring it, bring it back into the software, come back here and edit to put the blue back in because this is going a black shirt. And I don't have to put the shirt color back in here, but visually it would be a good checkpoint. Here's my blue shirt, here's my black shirt. So a very simple way to do that, to remove a faded out, you know, colored background. Um, and when you've got a few different colors in there, you can remove multiple colors at once. I think this is really great because as you can see, I didn't have to do too much to be able to get to exactly where I wanted. So fantastic. The next is a knock me out black feature, a simpler version of that. So we'll bring in this owl. Again, this is a JPEG image. And we go into knock me black out. This is great. Most of the time, this nails it right away. And there's a couple things you could do here. Again, you could do the red mask. This is where toner will go, transparent, my shirt color. That's what it's going to look like on the shirt. And if you zoom in, you will get to see some things happening in here. So here you can see there's some transparent, there's some kind of opaqueness to some of this black, right? You can see through to the background. And you can actually adjust some of that. So you can move this opaque all the way up and you'll see it's going to bring that back out. And if you, if you take a look on the screen, we actually will we'll put up here and we'll show you what these two images would look like. So one of them does a, a, a really cool, when I bring the opaque all the way down, it kind of puts some, it puts like some dots and some faded into the color. So it allows the color of the shirt to peek through in some areas. And when you look at it from, you know, when you look at it from a distance, it blends right into the shirt. You can also go all the way up if you want to kind of make it pop more in those spots and get a little more vibrant, you could do that as well. And this is going to depend on your artwork. So we can bring in one other real quick just to kind of give you a quick little demo on that. There's this woman in black and white. There's also a fit to page. I mean, there's a bunch of cool you could fit to width, fit to page, fit to length. And we will go into And you can see what it's done here. It's knocked the black out of the image. And again, we can make adjustments on all of this stuff to really get the exact look and feel that we want. It's really cool. It does, it's, it's so simple to be able to do something like this and get awesome looking prints. So the next thing that we will look at is let's go back to this and let's talk about making copies. So if I zoom in, people ask about that all the time. They say, well, I have a logo. I know that I want it to be four inches wide. I have the art. I want to get t t a dozen of them. What do I do, right? So you want it four inches. You can put four inches right there. There's your four inch logo. You can place it wherever you want on your sheet. And you see you've got your safety border here, right? But you want some copies. You click copies. And you can adjust spacing. So you want them to have, you know, you want them to be three quarters of an inch apart. So you can use your slicing machine to cut right down the middle. And then you can do this to add some more copies, say four of them. And you can add your spacing here. You can also just drag them straight down. So four, six, eight, 10, 12, you know, and so on. And after you do it, you can adjust your spacing between all the different to get it exactly how you want. If you want it a little tighter to try to fit more in, you could do something like that. So a really awesome and easy way to create a bunch. And again, it, the, the border moves with it, everything moves with it. And then when you print, your single image is still safe in here. So, you know, when we reset our job, it resets our size. So there's our size back. And I can go back and I can go down to one and one. And there's my original image in the original size. So I didn't actually edit or change anything. The software just did it for me. A really cool feature. I really, really like that. Uh, another one is these dots and stripes. And, and there's actually so much more than dots and stripes. You can go in there and there's, there's a dithering effect. And there are uh, squares and triangles and diamonds. There's a lot. Um, but the dots and stripes is kind of the standard. So how does this work? 
we rip it in with the dots and stripes and you can see training videos on how to do this but you rip it in with dots and stripes and when I rip it and I view the data you'll see I've got dots in this image and you can flip it for the dots to be empty or however you want but as we go out here we can see what's happening in the image and if I kind of go all the way out you can see where you can get this effect so a good art or fashion effect or something that feels light or weight on a t-shirt too especially if you're going to do a big giant print like this of this woman and you could also you know do this one with the knock me out black or you could do this woman say on a white t-shirt with the dots and we'll also show the, the stripes as well this view raw data is actually a feature too the view raw data is actually showing me what it's going to print so if I zoom in you'll see that it actually is pulling toner out in stripes. When we look at it all the way back, it's a small. You can see what's happening with these stripes. So it's another pretty cool effect, and it works great for some art. Uh, great for some art in stripes, great for some in dots, and others you'll use some of the other effects. And here's compared to, say, standard, where it's going to print complete. all of that in there. So they'll print all of this deep, all of this detail that's in this actual artwork. You can see it's going to print all of this detail. So you could take a look at all that. So another really cool feature is that. So one last thing to take a look at that I wanted to show you in here. We talked a little bit about some briefly in here. We talked about sizing, metallics, colors, neons, dots, stripes, etc. Making copies, um, knocking out black and different colors, auto reverse, auto border. A lot of cool features in this software. And one more is just kind of your cue and what's hanging out in here. So after you print something, it drops it down here. And if you need to print another copy of it again, so if you're consistently doing something or you printed it and you realize, oh, I, I, I need to print more of these, you can go here and you could bring that back up into your queue and it goes back into pending. So it's a really, it's a great feature that you can move things around that you're not using anymore or that you're done. And if you're completely finished with it, you can remove them completely like this and they're completely out. So print optimizer software, a nice little uh, mini demo right here. I hope you enjoyed watching this and taking a look. It's an awesome addition to the digital heat effects system and it's really going to help you get everything that you're looking for out of your prints in a much easier way without having to be a graphic artist or even own expensive software and it, this is done all throughout printing industries embroidery all this stuff plenty of people don't get into the artwork but they need a way to be able to operate their equipment efficiently and the print optimizer does that for you so thanks for watching enjoy if you have any other questions reach out to us and we'll be glad to help you out with anything with your digital heat effects system and print optimizer thank you